Hey everybody, it's Ben, and I'm back once again with another video for you guys. Today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about The Demon, Volume 1, Hell's Hitman, written by Garth Ennis and illustrated by John McCrea. Now this first volume collects issues 40 and 42 through 49 of this particular run on the series of The Demon, which is from Volume 3, which started back in the 1990s. So the volume follows the misadventures of Etrigan, which is Jason Blood's alter ego, and it's basically Jason using Etrigan's, you know, demonic powers to root out evils in the world, but it also follows this particular volume, um, actually follows a few adventures of Etrigan pretty much off on his own. Um, he's actually vanquishing um, fellow demons that he considers to be rivals, and once he takes on the role of being Hell's Hitman, he actually um, tracks down and pretty much, you know, brings an end to those who have basically escaped Hell, and they're basically looking to um, pretty much, you know, cause havoc and just wreak general chaos upon the upon the world. Now this first volume, largely for the most part, actually takes place in Gotham City. And in this first volume we also get um, the second of the Demon Annuals collected, which uh, features the first appearance and the origin of Tommy Monaghan, aka Hitman, who actually became such a popular character, he actually got the um, he actually got the, the go-ahead or the green light um, for, you know, Garth Ennis to continue his adventures in his own series, which was titled Hitman, um, which ran for about 60 issues um, thereafter, after he was introduced um, in the second annual of The Demon. Now, this volume is really quite heavy on the action, um, whether it be the first um, interaction with Etrigan and Tommy, where they basically crash a mob boss's funeral, and basically Tommy's just shooting up the place with, you know, any weapons he can get his hands on, whereas Etrigan is obviously accessing his demonic powers and using, you know, um, you know, hellfire and just his claws and all that kind of thing, and all the while he's spouting off some really great um, rhymes while he does it, and he's also, um, the main sort of big bad of this volume is a fellow demon that Etrigan is tracking down because he is posing as one of the big time mob bosses in Gotham City and he's looking to basically summon this really dark sort of greater demon if you will to unleash it upon the world and basically claim the entire world as his own sort of version of of hell. He's looking to bring literally hell to earth or hell on earth anyway. So um, Etrigan and Tommy Monaghan and a couple of other characters um, obviously join forces to take out this main sort of big bad if you will. Um, we actually get some appearances from some of Batman's lesser-known rogues gallery, um, specifically uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, uh, which I first became aware of thanks to their file or their, um, you know, their bio in the first Batman um, Arkham game, which is obviously Arkham Asylum, which was a fantastic game, and I kind of recommend that you play it highly enough. Um, writing and the storytelling by Garth Ennis is absolutely fantastic. He does an absolutely fantastic job of writing um, the story as well as the dialogue, particularly um, Etrigan's dialogue is one of the highlights considering that, as we all know, Etrigan has a penchant for obviously being a rhyming demon, so he talks in rhyme pretty much all the time, no pun intended. Um, so Garth Ennis really, really nails that aspect of the character, and John McCrea's artwork is just absolutely fantastic. Um, I first became aware of these two on actually the first one of Hitman that I reviewed um, a few years ago on my channel, um, and since then I've been wanting to track down the other volumes of uh, volumes of Hitman as well as the series of the Demon, which DC have collected now into two volumes, which collects. As I said, this is the first half, and then the next volume, which is Volume 2, The Longest Day, will collect the remaining issues of the series, which ran up to issue 58 before the series was cancelled. Also, um, with regards to um, another aspect of the story that we see, we really see, um, once Edrigan has been appointed the position of Hell's Headman by two angels of Hell, um, we really see... Um, events unfold um, due to Etrigan's new station in Hell, 
um, from Jason Blood's point of view because it really puts a dampener on things for him because it's established within the confines of this first volume that you know Jason and Etrigan have been bonded together for over 10 centuries over a thousand years and throughout that time Jason has you know used every arcane spell and every ritual he can think of that has ever been conjured by any you know, magic practitioner ever that ever lived to try and banish the demon from himself because obviously he's been bound to the demon ever since Merlin merged the two beings together back in, I would imagine, the days of Camelot um, when that particular um, moment in history within the DC Universe occurred. Um, Jason is really upset by the fact that obviously Etrigan's got this new station within the confines of Hell but also at the same time um, he or Etrigan is constantly getting in the way of Jason's happiness, especially when it comes to the romantic relationship that he has with his long-standing love interest, Glenda. Um, especially when Etrigan and Jason are, they're not separated, but Etrigan finds a way to loosen the bond between the two, and Etrigan pretty much becomes the dominant force for the majority of this first volume, and he really... Um, tortures both Etri uh, both Jason and Glenda, especially when you know their relationship together is pretty much in tatters. And then Etrigan pretty much answers the door to Glenda when she's shouting and screaming at him to open the door, thinking that Jason's going to open the door, but it's actually Etrigan. Um, he actually manages to drop a pretty big bombshell on uh, on Glenda. Um, later on in the story, um, although this is quite dark. Um, it's actually still really, really fun. It's, you know, it's really fun, bombastic action with, you know, a demon from hell who was obviously, as we all know, was created by Jack the King Kirby. Um, just, Edrigan's just a really great protagonist um, in his own right, as well as obviously um, Jason Blood being the secondary sort of main character, if you will. At the end of the story, we actually get a really great um, war story at the end, which features uh, zombie Nazis, as well as a undead ghost of a long dead uh, prominent uh, member of the confederate army so we get basically a ghost of a confederate general riding around on a um, a ghost horse basically helping out um, a, a quartet of fellow war buddies who both Jason and Etrigan enlist in their help to stop this real you know this really old bitter grisly um, former Nazi um, and his protege who he um, basically um, tutors to be the next Adolf Hitler um, stopped them from essentially creating a second Reich basically taking over the world and establishing the Nazis as a dominant worldwide superpower um, like I said there's a really great um, two-tone kind of really action-oriented um, battle sequence between obviously the forces of the undead zombie Nazis and you know the quartet of war buddies which Jason and Etrigan enlist and also um, Etrigan as well throws himself into the fray as well um, it's also like I said it's a really great war story because it centers around this unit of former war buddies and in fact they all reside within the same um, nursing home it also resolves uh, or revolves around this tank that was pretty infamous during you know, the Second World War, um, because of this quartet of war buddies of this tanker on the battlefield during the Second World War. It also gives um, this tank a bit of a backstory as well as last hurrah in terms of actually stopping, you know, like I said, a secondary, um, you know, Reich coming about as well as giving, um, you know, a last great story for the, for the boys to tell everyone back in the nursing home and giving them uh, you know, a final chance to be hero. Um, but we also get um, David Lloyd of V for Vendetta. He actually coloured the 40th issue, which is the start of Garth Ennis and John McRae's um, run on the demon from issue 40 up to 58 when the series was cancelled. I actually had the chance to um, meet David Lloyd at uh, one of the Cardiff Film and Comic Con events that I went to. I got him to actually sign my copy of the demon issue 40, as well as tell me the, uh, the backstory on how he actually came to... Um, color that particular issue because I'd never actually seen David Lloyd with a uh, a coloring credit on a, on a comic before. I obviously knew him from obviously his artwork on you know Viva Vendetta as well as his work that he's done um, previously with Jamie Delano back on you know the initial run of Hellblazer. That pretty much confused my thoughts on this particular first volume ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely fantastic stuff. If you're a fan of Garth Ennis and John McCrae's previous works on you know, on this particular series or on Hitman, or if you're a fan of Garth Ennis and John McCrea 
respectively as creators, or if you're just a fan of Jason Blood and his alter ego, alter ego Etrigan as a whole, you know, whether it be from, you know, reading the Jack Kirby stuff or seeing him in his appearances in the Justice League Unlimited animated series, I cannot recommend this series highly enough. Thank you everybody for watching, ladies and gentlemen. As always, feel free to, um, you know, leave a comment below, tell me what you think of the volume, um, you know, let me know what you think of the video. Uh, next time, I've been your host, Gambit896, signing off, and I'll see you guys next.